Today we're looking at a simple and cheap way to add dual extrusion to your existing 3D printer, including colour gradients. Dual extrusion 3D printing is definitely not for everyone, but it does have its appeal and its perks. Some time ago, I covered modifying my TiVo Tornado to add a servo controlled switching double hot end, which while problematic to set up, did eventually allow me to print two different materials at the same time without a purge block. Back then, I promised I would follow up by showing how to add dual extrusion in another way. And that's what we're covering today with a mixing hot end from Big Tree Tech. I wouldn't call it easy, but it is a lot simpler than the other system and capable of some pretty good results. Let's get started by evaluating two similar systems and then fitting the one that's more versatile. Product number one is from Big Tree Tech and it's a two in one out hot end compatible with the Ender 3, Ender 5 and CR10. Its price is around 19 US dollars and I purchased one of these some time ago but I couldn't remember it arriving and that brings us to product two. This one's also from Big Tree Tech it's towing one out, but the difference is the mixing of the filaments happens down in the heater block. Therefore, this is a mixing hot end. It's priced a little higher at US $27. I purchased this one too, and I was glad that I had both so I could make a proper comparison. So let's have a look at them side by side. The cheaper two in one out extruder comes with a heater cartridge and spare thermistor. And if we compare it to the standard Ender 3 hot end, we can see the dimensions are near identical, apart from the twin filament entries on the top. If we unscrew and remove this top section, we can see that this is just a regular lined hot end, and the top is just a Y piece with two Bowden tube fittings on the top. I think it's nice that they include both lengths of PTFE tube that you'd need to set this up. The mixing hot end is quite different in construction. It still has two Bowden inlets and one nozzle, but the filament remains separate the whole way through the heat sink and is mixed in the heater block. There's a proprietary nozzle on the bottom. I didn't have the tool to get it off. In fact, I damaged it trying to do so. And unfortunately, I can't show you the inside. It's worth noting that a cartridge thermistor is needed, but that comes in the package as well as a spare heater cartridge. We also have a small axial fan. The design of this hot end dictates that it bolts straight onto the heat sink and it comes with tools as well as mounting hardware. Once again, we have two lengths of PTFE tube and fittings. Despite it being harder to fit, I ended up going with the slightly more expensive mixing hot end. It's a lot more capable, so let me show you why. Here's the two hot ends for comparison, and if we look at the filament path inside, we'll see the main difference. Although two colors come in, the junction for their changeover is at the very top, where the hot end is indeed cold. If we wanted to switch from red to blue filament, we would need to completely retract the red filament before inserting the blue. Filament from the heater block quite often has a bulbous and misshapen end. Every time we want to switch filaments, two bulky pieces of filament are going to be floating somewhere inside the hot end. I'm going to speculate that this could prove unreliable. Add to this the amount of time it would take to retract one piece of filament and insert the other, Although I think this system could work, I wasn't that enthusiastic. By fitting this, I would be enabling dual extrusion, but the filament changes would be slow and I still would need a purge block. This ends up being waste filament that's used to transition between the colors and purge the old color from the nozzle. With the mixing hot end, we can push through the first color, the second, or any combination of the two. This means we could match the dual color purge block printing of the other hot end but we also had the option to vary the gradient between the two colors as the print went on, and this doesn't require a purge block. Furthermore, we could print with a combination of these two techniques. I chose the mixing hot end because I thought it was more capable, and Marlin has some excellent features built into it to work with this hot end, as you'll see later. For either of these, since we're adding a second roll of filament, there are some other parts that we still require. One of those is a second filament spool holder, and I found a design that looked like it would suit my printer on Thingiverse, put it into mesh mixer, and elongated it to give a little more clearance for my frame. The CR10 Max with a Homera 
volcano hot end and large nozzle is perfect for pumping out this type of print quickly. And after a few hours, I had my two new holders. The other things we're going to need are a spare stepper motor, as well as enough cabling to go back to the mainboard. You need an extruder assembly to go on that stepper motor. It needs to be quite similar to your original extruder, as the firmware requires you to have the same E-steps for the new and old extruder. You're also going to need a bracket to mount it to the frame, and there's plenty of free designs to print if you need one. You're also going to need an extra stepper motor driver to power this second extruder. And because of that, we have requirements around our main board. The standard Ender 3 board has four stepper motor drivers and therefore is incompatible. What you need is something like an SKR, which has slots for five. If you're unsure if your board is compatible, simply count the stepper motor drivers or stepper motor driver slots. Five is good, four is insufficient. With that checklist out of the way, we can proceed with installation. And our biggest problem is going to be mounting the new hot end as the mounting spacing is 10mm wider than a standard Ender 3. Now on this particular printer, I was already running a custom ABL system modelled on the Creality CR6. Therefore it was easy for me to clone the shroud, model up a simple version of the new hot end, and then modify the shroud, making it so the two fitted nicely together. I printed this new version in PETG. Here's the original design versus the modified one side by side. You can see I added little bosses on the inside to line up with the mixing hot end, and this resulted in a really nice snug fit. I made sure to mount it so I could access all of the grub screws. Just remember that if you choose this hot end, you're going to need some sort of printed adapter. Here it is on the printer, with a suitable amount of flex to trip the micro switch that runs the ABL. All of the wiring is routed in the correct location, but unfortunately none of them were long enough. Therefore, I decided to cut, solder and heat shrink them into the original wiring loom. With all of the cable management back in place, it ended up looking pretty tidy. The new mixing hot end is quite a bit longer, which means the factory part cooling fan duct is pointing right at the heater block. Again, I took to CAD and modelled up a quick solution. I'll add the file for this one on Thingiverse. It's not perfect, but at least it gets the airflow in the ballpark. As for the rest of the physical install, it was actually quite straightforward. The two new filament holders bolted nicely onto the back of the frame, and there was plenty of room across the top of the frame to add in the second stepper motor and extruder. With the printer together, it was time to tackle the firmware, and this was actually the easiest part. There's only one major change in configuration.h, and that's to uncomment define mixing extruder. We also need to make sure that mixing steppers is set to 2, and I highly recommend uncommenting Define Gradient Mix. Apart from this, we just need to double check we've set the correct stepper motor driver for our new extruder, that its direction matches what we have for extruder 0, and if we're using TMC drivers, that we double check the current and micro steps. After the firmware is updated, we need to do a PID auto tune on the new hot end. We can do that via console, or we can come to the LCD, enter the temperature we're aiming for, and click the knob to begin. This will take a few minutes, and when it's done, we need to make sure to remember to come to configuration and store our settings. Since the hot end is longer, the other thing that you'll need to do is either re-level your bed, or if you're using auto bed leveling, recalculate your Z offset, making sure to save this to the EEPROM. Back on the status screen, we'll notice we have a new mixing display, and in the main menu, we also have a new mixer item. The mix item decides which extruder is selected, or, if you like, which ratio that they're both pushing at the same time. This means you can have one colour, the other colour, or any combination of them. Back in the early days of the channel, I reviewed the GTEC A10M, which has a similar mixing hot end to what we're fitting here. The A10M let you seamlessly fade between two different colours without the need for any special G-code. This is something we can now recreate very easily. Here I've sliced a vase from Thingiverse and I know it's 100mm high. This is just regular single extrusion G-code. On the LCD, if we come to the mixer menu and then scroll down until we reach gradient, we can come to the NZ and set our height at 100mm. 
we can see here that it's going to start with tool zero end with tool one and do so over a span of 100 millimeters all we need to do now is start the print the rest is completely automatic we'll notice that as the print progresses the gradients are automatically changed by the firmware and if we examine how much each extruder is turning the movement should correlate with what we're seeing on the lcd now my first example didn't exactly go to plan you'll notice that the lower half is red and then part way up it kicks into gear and goes from purple all the way up to solid blue by the top this was caused by me doing up a bolt on the extruder too tight so that the lever was binding upping the nozzle temperature 10 degrees also helped but I wanted to showcase this properly, so I repeated the technique with a low poly fox. This time it worked like a charm, with a smooth transition from blue to purple and finishing with red. Of course with this modification, your printer is now capable of traditional dual extrusion printing. And I've previously made a guide on how to set up four different slices for just this. In Simplify 3D, you can't just add an extruder to an existing profile. Instead, you need to import one that already has it, in my case, the GTEC A10M, and then manually copy over all of your print settings to the new profile. This one turned out okay, apart from the excessive stringing, but I put in no time to fixing this. To inspect what was underneath, I started some cleanup. Using a combination of a heat gun, side cutters, and a sharp blade, the final result was actually decent. Remember this is uncalibrated first print and it's quite a torture test at that with many small segments and details. This is a particularly good model for testing out dual extrusion and it proved for me that this system works as advertised. There is of course the matter of the purge block coming in at almost twice the weight of the actual object. One other feature that you may have spied earlier is virtual tools. Let's say that we inspect our gradient fox and particularly like the shade of purple 40% of the way up and that means 60% of the way down from the top. In the LCD menu we can now create a new virtual tool, come back and toggle the mix to match those values. On the LCD we can actually set up a range of these virtual tools and store them to EEPROM. In your slicer you can then add another extruder, in this case it's called mix extruder and I simply set it to the correct tool to match what was on the LCD. I haven't tried this technique yet, but by making virtual extruders mixing the other two colors, it's possible to have multicolor prints using only two rolls of filament. So there we have it, a simpler, much more affordable method of adding dual extrusion to your existing 3D printer. The upside of this system is we've got our automatic color gradients, the downside is we're going to waste filament on a purge block when we're doing proper dual extrusion. I've certainly got some work to do in dialing in the retraction, but I am confident that I can get it sorted. After previously reviewing the GTEC A10M, I was very interested in this product and several of my patrons wanted to see a video on it too. I'd like to know if you think it's useful by leaving your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy dual extrusion 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.